Hi, fifth graders, and welcome to another ELA lesson with me, Miss Mooney. I can't wait to get started on today's lesson. So today's topic is going to be on characters changing over time. And so we're going to be looking at how Esperanza as a character changes throughout the book so far, what we've read. So the objective today is that I can explain how Esperanza's character has changed throughout the novel. So here's a little agenda that I created for us today because we have a couple different things we're going to be going over. So the first thing on the agenda is that we're going to go over the answers to yesterday's Esperanza assessment. So in yesterday's lesson, if you watched it, we did a short six question assessment on the book so far. So if you haven't done that and you'd still like to do it, feel free to pause and go back to yesterday's learning guide and complete that assessment so that we can go over the answers today. And then next, we are going to answer questions about Esperanza and Mama, and then we're gonna discuss how Esperanza's character has changed. So as you've read so far in the book, you've seen that Esperanza's character has changed a lot as different important events are happening, and a lot of those events uh, include Mama in them. So we're gonna see how those work together and answer questions. And then lastly, we're gonna do a quick writing assignment. So we're gonna complete that assignment, and then we'll be finished for today. So let's get started. So like I said, the first thing we're doing today is the assessment review, which basically means we're just going to go over the answers and see how we did. So I'm going to open up the answers right here. And so I'm actually going to go through the quiz with you so I can explain it a little bit if there's anything that was confusing. So the first question was, have you enjoyed reading our novel? I've enjoyed it, so I'm going to put yes, but you can put whatever you'd like to. Um, have you read through chapter nine? Yes, I did. So for the first question, it says, what happened in this chapter? Please write a one to two sentence summary of the chapter. So for that question, we actually did that one together yesterday in the video. Um, but what we decided was what happened in the chapter was that Esperanza had to watch the babies all by herself. And we know that it did not go very well after the babies got sick. Um, and so Esperanza had to figure out what to do. And then we also know that there was a big dust storm that happened and it covered everything in dust and also made mama sick because the dust got in her body. And then in the end, Esperanza talks about how she's worried that her mama might die. So that's what I wrote for question one. Since it was a short answer question, yours might be a little bit different and that's totally fine, but that's kind of the gist of it. Now for question two. It says, this chapter is titled, Las Cruzelas or Plums. Why do you think Pam Munoz Ryan chose the chapter for this, or chose the title for this chapter? So I'll just read through the answers. So the first one was that plums are the author's favorite fruit and think everyone should try a plum. No, so that one's kind of goofy, so she doesn't talk about it all that. Plums are the author's favorite fruit, so it's not that one. And the next I wrote, plums are a delicious fruit, but will make you sick if your stomach is not used to this. And so this is similar to mama getting sick of the dust because her body was not used to that. So I like that answer um, because the plums were so good and the babies loved eating them and they wanted more, but their bodies weren't used to it, so the kids got sick. And so that's kind of like what happened with mama with the dust is that her body wasn't used to it, so she got sick. So it's almost like the title of plums was kind of comparing the two situations but we'll read the next two as well. The next it says, <clears throat> plums are important as bronze culture, so they eat them very often. No, the author doesn't really talk about that at all. And then lastly, it says, the chapter is named plums to inform the reader to not eat many plums or else they'll get sick. So no, it wasn't about that one either, just based on our context clues. It didn't really inform us of that. Um, and so I'm gonna go with number two, that they're the delicious fruit, but it will make you sick if your body is not used to it. All right, question number three, make an inference. So just kind of like a prediction. It's kind of like an, um, some, you kind of like have a thought about something that you kind of determine something in your mind. So what does Esperanza's response to the challenge on pages 139 through 143, which that's all about when the babies get sick, tell us about her as a person. Find evidence from the text to support your answer. So, <clears throat> As we talked about yesterday, that whole part of the book was all about how the babies got sick and Esperanza had to clean them and she had to do all of these different things to problem solve and try to find a way to fix the situation. Um, and so the only one, that, the only answer that really makes sense in this one is the third one where it says Esperanza is a great problem solver. Because we know that Esperanza did not give up. She tried cleaning the babies, she made them the rice water. Um, we know that she wanted to help the sick babies because she did all the steps to try to help them. 
And then lastly, we also know that she didn't give up and she didn't just wait for Isabella to get home. So the third is the best one. <clears throat> and then this is just the expert excerpt. Yes, I did read the excerpt. So number four, in one sentence, summarize the challenge Esperanza and Mama are facing at this point in the novel. So the answer that I put was that Esperanza is a problem solver and she's trying to figure out what to do in hard situations based on things that she knows. And so she was thinking about what did Horsinia give her when she was a child? She gave her rice water. Um, and so that is kind of like the challenge that they're facing is that they're in this new situation and that um, they, so, okay, just realized that number three and number four got switched. Um, that wasn't the right answer for number four, actually. Um, so we're just going to go through and do that one together for number four. So disregard that answer I just put about the rice water. That one was wrong. I just realized that. Um, so let's do that one together. So it says, in one sentence, summarize the challenge Esperanza and Mama are facing at this point in the novel. So in the excerpt, it says, Esperanza felt Alfonso behind her, putting her, his hands on her shoulders. She felt the blood drain from her face. She wanted to tell the doctor that she could not lose Mama too, that she had already lost Papa and Avalito was way too far away. Her, vo her voice strangled with fear. All she could do was whisper the doctor's uncertain words, if she survives. So the question is saying, summarize the challenge that they are facing. So basically the challenge that they are facing in that little sentence, that expert, is that Mama is not doing very well, is that she's really sick and that the doctor doesn't know if she's gonna get better or how they're gonna help her. <clears throat> and so the challenge that Esperanza is facing is that she's already lost her papa and Abuelita is in a whole different country. And so she is just kind of running out of options at this point, which means that people in her family aren't doing very well and she's getting so scared. So that's the summary that I would give. Um, yours might be a little bit different, but that's okay too with these short answer questions. But um, that's the summary that I would think. All right, let's do number five. So what does it mean to have blood drain from your face? So having blood drain from your face is kind of an expression, but it's also literal. So basically what that means is that you get really freaked out and really worried about something. And it's like the blood is come like just kind of draining down into your body and you feel lightheaded and your face is white. Um, and so let's see. So it's going to be number one, A. So the blood was leaving Esperanza's head and making her face look very white. So that's what that expression means. So it doesn't mean that there's literally blood coming out. Um, it doesn't mean that blood is like filling her head. It means that it's like draining. And so we know that because of our word drain. So we know that the word drain means for something to like come out of or to like fall out of. So that's the answer for five. And then for number six, what does it mean to say Esperanza's voice was strangled with fear? So that's another expression, but we can break that down because to strangle something means to kind of like hold it really tight. And so, so if fear is strangling something, that means that you're really scared. Um, and so I went with number one because strangled also means to like choke. And so her voice feels choked and that she feels like she can't talk. Now for number seven, how does the author's use of the word drain help us understand how Esperanza is feeling? And this one's a little bit easy, but it allows the reader to imagine how she's feeling. So last week when we talked about figurative language and why we use figurative language, it's because it allows us to imagine how people are feeling in the book, how characters are feeling, and kind of puts like a picture in our head. So it was that it allows us to imagine how she's feeling. So great job with that quiz, and I hope you just did your best, and I think you did great. So. Let's keep on going with our lesson now. And if that was a little too fast going through all of those questions, please feel free to go back in the video and take a look at those answers again so that you can compare how you did. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a quick review of chapter 10. So you should have read chapter 10 last night um, or whenever you watched the last video to prepare for today. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick review of chapter 10. So if you haven't read it so far, that's okay too. We're going to um, put down the most important points of the chapter. But if you'd like, you can also pause right now and catch up and read that chapter. But let's go ahead and discuss some of the really important parts of the chapter. 
So the first one is that mama is getting worse. So we know that mama is sick because she breathed in all of that dust from the dust storms that's in her lungs and her body's not used to it. And she's not getting much better. And so Esperanza wants to finish Abuelita's blanket for her. Um, and so the reason why she wants to do that is because mama misses Abuelita so badly and she wishes that Abuelita could be there for her. And so as a way to make her feel better, Esperanza decides that she is going to finish the blanket that Abuelita was making. Um, and so in the blanket metaphor, we've talked about how Abuelita puts her hair into the blanket for best wishes and love. And um, so that's talking about how she wants her mama to feel that kind of love and best wishes of Abuelita since she can't be there in person. And then the next thing that happens is that Esperanza asked Miguel to help her find a job. And she wants a job because she wants to bring Abuelita to mama. And so at this point in the book, Abuelita is still in Mexico in Aguas Calientes with the uncle. And it's gonna take a lot of money to bring Abuelita to California. But Esperanza thinks that that's the only way that mama is gonna feel better. And so the, she gets a job so that she can get some money and save some money to bring Abuelita to mama. And then, oh, two more. So the next, the workers are cutting potatoes and they spoke about striking soon. So um, Esperanza gets a job with cutting potatoes to get them ready to plant for harvesting. And they start sh talking about a strike. And so basically a strike is where workers stop working and they do not wanna work until they get paid better or until their conditions improve. So like their working environment's better. And so there's some talk going on about that. So in this chapter, they haven't decided yet that that's what they're gonna do, but they're talking about it. And that makes Esperanza a little bit nervous. And then on the very last page of the book, Esperanza tells Mama that she is going to take care of the family now. So Esperanza is feeling a little bit more confidence now that she has a job and that she is beginning to have a way to bring Abuelita back to them. So she decides that she is gonna be in charge of taking care of their family. So that's where we've ended with the chapter. So we're going to go over and we're going to do a couple different questions to do a quick character study. So we're going to be studying Esperanza and we're also going to be studying Mama. Um, so first we're going to be looking at a couple of questions that have to do with Esperanza. So we're going to be reading pages 158 through 161 in the book. Um, this is all still in chapter 10, the potatoes chapter. And so you can either read along with your own book or you can listen to your audiobook, whatever you like to do. Um, but I'm also going to show the pages on the screen so that you can read along with me. But I'll be reading it out loud if you just want to listen. So these are the questions that we're going to be discussing about Esperanza. So what I like to do when I read and I have questions, um, this is kind of like the close reading we've practiced before, is that I like to take sticky notes or I like to take index cards, anything like that, and put them in my book where I saw answers to this. Um, and so we're going to kind of pretend to do that together as we're reading, and I'll point out to you where I found that these questions are. Um, and so that's a really good strategy just for making sure that we know exactly where in the text we can find our answer to our question. So let's go over the questions. So our first question is, why did Esperanza start working in the sheds? So we already talked about that a little bit more in that preview I just gave you, or that summary of the chapter, but we'll read about it. Number two, why did Esperanza promise Abuelita, or what did Esperanza promise Abuelita she would do after she left her? Hmm. So I talked about that a little bit in the summary, but not a lot, so we're going to have to find that in the book. And then lastly, why did Horsinia tell Esperanza not to send a letter to Abuelita? So this question actually isn't in these couple of pages, it's a little bit later on in the chapter, um, but we'll talk about it some more too. So let's get to reading. So it's starting on page 158, the beginning of the chapter. Esperanza almost never left Mama's side. She sponged her with cool water and fed her teaspoons of broth throughout the day. So broth is kind of like chicken, and when you, or, um, I don't know why I said that, it's kind of like soup, like maybe like a chicken noodle soup, like a, something like that. Um, and then the sponge someone means to literally take a sponge and put it on someone's forehead or maybe put it on their neck to cool them down. It's with like cool water. Um, Miguel offered to take over the sweeping job for her, but Esperanza wouldn't let him. Irene and Melina, arrived every morning to check on mama and take care of the babies. Alfonso and Juan put up extra layers of newspaper and cardboard in the bedroom to keep out the November chill, and Isabella drew pictures to hang on the walls because she did not think the newspaper looked pretty enough for mama. 
The doctor came back a few weeks later with more medicine. She's not getting worse, he said, shaking his head, but she's not getting better either. Mama drifted in and out of fitful sleep, and sometimes she'd call out for Abuelete. Esperanza could barely sit still and often paced around the small room. So to pace around a move means that you walk back and forth and back and forth just because you're feeling kind of antsy, a little bit nervous, and you just can't sit still. One morning, Mama said weakly, Esperanza? Esperanza ran to her bed and took her hand. Abuelita's blanket, she whispered. Esperanza port pulled her facile, which is like a suitcase, from under the bed. She had not opened it since before the dust storm and saw that the fine brown powder had even found its way deep inside, as it has found its way into Mama's lungs. She lifted out the crocheting that Abuelita had started the night Papa died. It seemed like a lifetime ago. Had it only been a few months? She stretched out the zigzag rows. They stretched from one side of Mama's bed to the other, but were only a few hands wide. So that means like a few hands are like this. So it was only about this wide. So it couldn't really cover all of her. Looking more like a long scarf than the beginnings of a blanket, Esperanza could see Abuelita's hair woven in so that all of her love and good wishes would go with them forever. She held the crocheting to her face and could still smell the smoke from the fire and the faintest scent of peppermint. So remember, peppermint is what she always thought her grandma smelled like. <clears throat> Esperanza looked at Mama, breathing uneasily, her eyes closed. It was clear that she needed Abuelete. And 60. They both needed her. But what was Esperanza to do? She picked up Mama's limp hand and kissed it. Then she handed the strip of zigzag rose to Mama, who clutched it to her chest as she was like holding onto the blanket. What, did, what had Abuelita told her when she had given the bundle of crocheting? And then she remembered. She had said, finish this for me, Esperanza, and promise me that you'll take care of Mama. So if you see in that part right there, I just saw that something with the word promise and that Abuelita made Esperanza promise her. So if I was using sticky notes or something, I would flag that right there because of that word. It has to do with our question. After Mama fell asleep, Esperanza picked up the needlework and began where Abuelita had left off. It's 10 stitches up to the top of the mountain, add one stitch, nine stitches down to the bottom of the valley, skip one. Her fingers were more nimble now and her stitches were even more even, or more even. The mountains and the valleys and the blanket were easy, but as soon as she reached a mountain, she was headed back down to a valley again. Would she ever escape this valley she was living in? This is the valley of mama being sick. So I remember that valley, that metaphor, it means that at the bottom of the valley is kind of like the lowest point that Esperanza feels. It's when Esperanza feels the worst. And when she goes up to the mountain, it's when things start to get better. So right now she's asking herself, are we at a valley because mama is sick and are we gonna stay at this valley? Now the bottom of 160. What else had Abuelita said? After she had said, after, after she had said live in many mountains and valleys, they would be together again. She bent over her work intent, and when her hair fell into her lap, she picked it up and wove it into the blanket. She cried when she thought of the wishes that would go into the blanket forever, because she was wishing that Mama would not die. The blanket grew longer, and Grandma grew more pale. Women in the camp brought her extra skins of yarn, which is like pieces of yarn, and Esperanza didn't care that they didn't match. Each night when she would go to bed, she would put the growing blanket back over Mama, covering her in hopeful color. Lately, it seemed Esperanza could not interest Mama in anything. Please, Mama, she begged. You must eat more soup. Please, Mama, you must drink more juice. Mama, let me comb your hair. It'll make you feel better. But Mama was listless, and Esperanza often found her weeping in silence. It was, after all, her hard work getting them there. Her strong and determined mother had given up. So now let's go back to those questions that we read, or the questions that we had before, and talk about what the answers to those questions were in the text. So I'm mostly just going to talk about how I got to these answers, um, and then you can compare it to what you thought about it, and we can see how we did. So the first question was, why did Esperanza start working in the sheds? So Esperanza started working in the sheds because she wanted to save money to bring Abuelita to California to be with them. And so in the beginning of those couple of pages, it talked about how Esperanza had um, the two women 
Melina and the other, I can't remember the other woman's other character's name, but um, she had them come and help watch the babies. And so Esperanza is starting to think of how she can start to start working again so that she can bring Abelie to the California to be with them. So in the summary that I gave you, we talked about how she asked Miguel for a job and was help, having them help her get a job. And she was doing that so that she could save money to bring Abelita to California. All right, now let's look at question number two. What did Esperanza promise Abuelita she would do after she left? So remember that part I told you that I would have put like a sticky note or something because it talked about the promise. So in that part, it talked about how Esperanza promised that she would take care of Mama while Abuelita was still in Mexico. And so um, Abuelita had asked, had asked Esperanza to promise her that she would finish the blanket and that she would take care of her Mama for her. And then for our last question, so this is the one I talked about was a little bit later in the chapter. Um, and so I didn't show that part of it up on the screen, but this is also just one if you read the chapter. Um, it asked, why did Horsinia tell Esperanza not to send a letter to Abulete? And so the reason for that is that Horsiana told Esperanza that her uncle was reading their mail. So the reason why he was doing that was because he doesn't know that they escaped and they left to California. And so if Esperanza sent a letter from California to Abuelete, then the uncle might read that letter and he might be able to go find them. And so that's not what they want to happen because it took a lot for them to go to California to get these new jobs and to be safe. So now we're going to talk about three questions about Mama. So we did a character study on Esperanza now so far in the book, but now we're going to be talking about Mama as well. So how is Mama feeling physically? Be sure to give detailed evidence from the text. So when it asks how is she feeling physically, that means like, is she feeling sick? Is she feeling better? How is like her body feeling? So we've already talked about that a little bit. Um, number two, reread the last paragraph on page 161. What inferences can you make about how Mama is feeling emotionally? So the two differences between how you're feeling physically and how you're feeling emotionally is physically is like your body, like I said. So do you have a headache? Does your hands hurt? Do you have a stomach ache? Things like that. But emotionally is kind of like your thoughts and your feelings. So are you feeling happy? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling upset? Things like that. The author uses the word litless to describe mama. What does that word mean in the sentence? Use context clues to help. Now on number three, on page 163, what did the doctor mean when he said that mama was depressed? Cite evidence from the text to support your answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at question number one. How is mama feeling physically? Be sure to give detailed evidence from the text. So I went into the text and I looked on page 158 where I found this information. And so I wrote down about how the doctor says that she is not getting worse, but she's also not getting better either. And then also we read that she can't sleep well and she's drifting in and out of a fitful sleep. So basically what a fitful sleep is, is that means that if you're having a fit, it means that something's wrong. Something doesn't feel good and you're moving around and maybe you're trying to sleep, but you can't really fall asleep because you're not comfortable. And so that's the kind of sleep she had. And then she was having trouble breathing because she was breathing uneasily. So basically all this is talking about that she does not feel good physically and that she's having trouble breathing, she's having trouble sleeping. Also another detail is Esperanza was trying to get her to eat more, but she wasn't. So that's how I answered question number one. So now question number two, reread the last paragraph on page 161. What inferences can you make about how mama is feeling emotionally? The author uses the word litless to describe mama. What does that word mean in the sentence? Use context clues to help. So let's focus on the first part of that question. And it was rereading the last paragraph and then making an inference about how she's feeling emotionally. So let's read the last two paragraphs. Lately, it seemed Esperanza could not interest mama in anything. Please, Mama, she begged. You must eat more soup. Please, Mama, you must drink more juice. Mama, let me comb your hair. It'll make you feel better. But Mama was listless, and Esperanza often found her weeping in silence. It was as if, after all, her hard work in getting them there, her strong and determined mother had given up. So the inference we can make about how Mama's feeling emotionally is that she seems sad, right? So it's talking about how mama does not want to eat more. She doesn't want to drink more. 
Um, and then also they found her weeping in silence. So it also means like silently crying. And so those are all details about her just feeling sad and not feeling well. And then for the second part of this question, she uses the word litless to describe mama. So basically what litless is, is it just means like um, feeling sad and not feeling good. And so even if that was a word that you've never seen before, you can know based on context clues that it obviously doesn't mean happy. So you can kind of take that word and replace it with something else. So what if we said, but mama was happy and us bronze often found her weeping in silence. Yeah, so with our context clues, that doesn't really make sense, right? But if we put the word sad in there, but mama was sad and Esperanza often found her weeping in silence, it makes a little bit more sense. So if you ever don't need a word, try putting in other words that you do know to see if it fits the sentence. So this is what I wrote as my answer. Mama is very sad because she is weeping and she has given up. She does not want to try anymore to be strong and determined. The word litless has to do with being sad and not wanting to do anything. Because in the paragraph before, it seems that Esperanza could not interest Mama in anything. And what she means by she can't interest her in stuff is that she can't make Mama feel hungry or make her feel happy or make her feel excited. That she's just not interested in that. She's just sad. So that was the answer to number two. And now number three, it says on page 163, what did the doctor mean when he said that Mama was depressed? So let's take a look, let's read 163 real quick. So I'm gonna be starting at the right beginning. Made from the Trex headlamps, feeling as if she was in a trance. Christina, what did the doctor mean when he said that mama was depressed? So that's the word we're looking for. And this is Christina talking. In only a few months, she has lost her husband, her home, her money, and she is separated from her mother. It is a lot of strain on her body to cope with so many emotions in such a short time. Sometimes sadness and worry can make a person sicker. Your mother was very strong through your father's death and her journey here for you. But when she got sick, everything became too much for her. Think of how helpless she must feel. And Horsiana took out her handkerchief and she blew her nose and she was also very upset. So basically what this means is that mama is feeling depressed, which is like a sadness. And it's not just that her body is sick from the dust, but it's also that emotionally her feelings aren't doing well either. It's almost like her emotions are sick too. And so she is sick from worrying so much. And so Horsiana says sometimes sadness and worry can actually make someone feel sicker and that everything became too much for her. So it's almost like mama is feeling overwhelmed and she's feeling sad. And if you're not feeling good, like your emotions and your feelings, then sometimes your body won't feel good either. And so that's basically what this part means. <clears throat> so those were the two character study questions that we're going to learn for today or we're going to go over for today and so now the second part of what our objective is for today is that we want to talk about how characters change over time and so this chapter was really important for Esperanza's character because it shows how she's changing that she's not just the little girl she was in the beginning having fun walking around in the rose bushes and everything but now she's getting older and she's having to deal with some really difficult things in her life so let's first talk about why we talk about why characters change so the first reason i put down is that we track how characters change over time to learn how they grow up and so we also want to um how the character learns new things or how they interact with their environment so what that means is that we want to see how, so like with Esperanza, we want to see how she grows up and we want to see what events make her grow up um, and also how she's learning new things and how she's interacting with whatever's happening around her. And so with all of those new events and new details, her character changes. And then next, we want to learn about their challenges and their hardships. So as someone grows up, they're going to have new difficulties in life and new things that come at them. And especially with Esperanza moving to a brand new home and mama getting sick and everything, those are a lot new challenges. And so her character changes as she adapts to those challenges, and how she learns from them. And then lastly, we wanna see how characters problem solve and how they improve their situation. So um, as we talked about before, Esperanza is a great problem solver and she's motivated and she wants to make things better for her family. And so 
we want to see how she does that problem solving. And, and so like the example of Esperanza giving the babies the rice water to make their stomachs feel better, I wonder if she would have done that when she was a little kid. You know, I wonder if she would have had that experience and that idea to do that. Maybe, maybe not, but um, that's something that we don't know, of course, but that could show how her character is changing. So what I did is that I kind of made like a timeline for Esperanza. And so this timeline is going to be like an important event from each chapter, but we're going to talk about how those events changed um, Esperanza as a character and also like what her character was like. So in chapter one, Esperanza was happy and she was enjoying life with her family. So if we think about her character then, there were lots of details about her loving life and enjoying the time that she got to spend with her papa on their beautiful land. And she loved the people that worked for them and she loved her pretty dresses and everything like that. And so that was her character. She was happy and enjoying her time. So chapter two was a lot different as Esperanza was planning her quinceanera. So Esperanza still had a lot of money and she had all of these plans for the future and this big birthday party she was going to have. But that was also the chapter when Papa went missing. And so this was kind of like the first event that was very difficult in Esperanza's life. And so already we can see her character changing a little bit because now it's not just a chapter about her being happy and excited the whole time, but now we start to see what it's like when Esperanza feels sad or feels worried, different feelings like that. And then in chapter three, this chapter was really difficult because Esperanza found out that her papa did die. And this day, her chapter three is the day of Esperanza's birthday but she does not feel excited and she doesn't feel, she doesn't feel those exciting feelings that she's felt in the past. And so that is obviously a big shift from chapter one. As chapter one, she was so happy and enjoying her life and chapter two, she was excited for her birthday, but now chapter three, everything has turned around and Esperanza's papa died and Esperanza just, just is not enjoying her birthday like she normally would. Now in chapter four, we saw that Esperanza's house lit on fire, and now her and her mama decide that they have to leave. And so this was like a huge turning point for Esperanza's character too, because her house was something that she loved, and she loved all of her memories in her house, but now that house is gone. Um, and so this was a big pivotal moment, or pivotal also means kind of like, a, um, like an important moment where things turned around because now she has to leave the house. And so now her character is changing because she now has to deal with not being able to spend the time in her house and have those fun memories like she did before. So now in chapter five, Esperanza goes to California. And so in that chapter was all about bravery and all about her taking these new risks. And even though it wasn't a fun adventure, an adventure that Esperanza wanted, it was an adventure that her character had to go on. And so, I think what's pretty crazy is that Esperanza's character in chapter one would never dream of going on a crazy adventure like that and would never think about the bravery that that would take. But now in chapter five, her character is doing that because she has to, because her life depends on it. Um, and so that's how her characters change so much over time here. And then, let's see, well, that, so chapter six, sorry, that was another, that looks like a typo redo from chapter three. Um, but in chapter six, she goes to California and then in chapter six, they move to the new place that they're gonna live. So, um, oh, sorry, the dog just scared me. Um, but yeah, so that one was another little typo. Sorry for the typos today, guys. I don't know why I was messing up there, but um, in chapter six, it's basically when they go to California and they go to the new place where they're gonna live in the Mexican workers camp, is what they call it in the book. Um, and so that's just totally different. Now she's not in her beautiful land in Mexico where she loves and um, working on the ranch, but now she's living somewhere totally different. All right, so now we have a couple more chapters left to talk about. So in chapter seven, they move into a room in the Mexican camp. And so this one was interesting for her character too, because back home in Mexico, Esperanza had a big, beautiful bedroom to herself with all of her toys. But in chapter seven, Esperanza and Mama move into a very small room into this camp and they have to share a bed. 
which is so different for Esperanza's character. And then in chapter eight, Esperanza thinks about her life back in Aguas Calientes, and she hears the people talking about striking. So Esperanza is thinking back on her life, and she's thinking about all the great things that she's had, and she's telling Isabella about those beautiful things that she had. And so now we see that Esperanza's character is starting to remember those memories, but they're not really happy memories, right? They're kind of more um, like longing memories, which means that you're wishing for something to be different, that you're thinking about these old memories because you're sad. And then in chapter nine, this is the chapter that we talked about yesterday where Esperanza has to take care of the babies and she problem solves, but then she burns the beans and she's, she just becomes very frustrated. So this is kind of like the first time that we see Esperanza really having to take charge and take care of other people. And um, in the beginning of the book, she was just a kid and she was the only kid um, that her parents had. And so she was like a sing an only child. Um, and everyone around her took care of her and there was workers that took care of her and she had the housekeeper and she had Miguel and she had everyone that took care of her, but now it's her responsibility to take care of other people. So that's very different too. And then now we've left off in chapter 10. Esperanza knows that mama is not getting better. She gets a job. And so that's different too. She grew up very rich and she grew up never having to work because of her father's money and how he owned the ranch. But now she has to get a job for herself to start helping out her family. And Esperanza also decides that she is going to take care of the family now. So that's where we ended off. And if you see how different that was from chapter one, as you can see on the top, that she was happy and she was enjoying life with her family and thinking about her birthday. But now in chapter 10, Esperanza is deciding that she is going to be the one who's going to take care of the family now. So I think that is probably the biggest change that I've seen in her character is that she started in chapter one with talking about all these people that she loves that help take care of her and take care of her family. But now in chapter 10, Esperanza has to take care of people all by herself. And so that's going to be a lot of new experiences for her character. So that was a ton of information that we just went over, but it all comes to our writing challenge that you're going to finish up with today. So the challenge is how is Esperanza changing? And so you want to talk about evidence in chapter 10 to support your opinion. So I just gave that whole explanation about the events in Esperanza for every chapter. And so as you're writing, what you can do is that you can go back to these slides and rewatch um, so that you can see what happened in every chapter and compare how Esperanza has changed. And then in chapter 10, right down here, um, the writing challenge also asks you to cite evidence. So we've done that before, we've had some practice, but basically what that means is that you're just going in the book and you're taking quotes or taking pieces of what was in the book to put in your response so that you can show why your response is correct. So this is what I'm going to leave you on today. So hopefully all of my rambling and talking um, gave you lots of ideas and thoughts for how you would like to answer this question. So. Um, I would say answer this question in two or more sentences. Uh, it could be as long as you want, though, if you have lots of ideas, but we will come back to this question and see how everyone did after um, in the future lesson. So yeah, I'll read it one more time. How is Esperanza changing? Cite evidence from chapter 10, or Las Papas Potatoes, to support your opinion. So also this writing challenge says your opinion, and so that also means that this is how you think that she's challenged, or she's changing, I mean. And so when we just went over how she's changing um, on those purple slides just back, that was all my opinion. And so it was what I thought and how I inferred the book. So this is gonna be what you think. So if your opinion that you don't think Esperanza has changed at all, you can write that, but cite some evidence to back that up. So it can be however you think. Okay, does that sound good? So, um, we're gonna end the video now and end today's lesson. So try to spend, you might need about 30 minutes thinking about this writing activity. Get an adult to help you if you need to uh, reread chapter 10 to find any evidence you wanna write in there, but go ahead and do your writing challenge. So thank you so much for doing today's lesson with me. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. So I hope you have a good rest of your day and good luck on your writing challenge.